All right, well, now we're on chapter 10. This is the skills practice package chapter 10, and this is number one. This chapter involves a lot of factoring uh, in the form of fractions. So what you have to do in most of these questions is simplify or multiply or divide or add or subtract fractions, but the fractions have polynomials. So you have to first usually factor the polynomials and then do the operation that they ask you to do. In the first case, let's look at some simple fractions. So we'll go back to the basics. We'll take something like, well, let's try, you know, 5 fifteenths, really simple. 5 fifteenths, all right, is the same thing as 5 over 5 times 3, right? Well, guess what? When we see there's a 5 on top and bottom, we can divide by 5 on top and bottom and get 1 over 3. I think everybody knows how to do that. It's pretty simple. It's just simplifying fractions, so you can get it in lowest possible simplified form. The same thing happens with polynomial fractions. So, for instance, we've got x squared minus 1 on the top and 2x squared minus x minus 1 on the bottom. If we factor the top and factor the bottom, then we'll find something that will cancel and we'll get a simplified fraction. So x squared minus 1, got to recognize that's difference of squares, which is equal to x plus 1 and x minus 1, right? That we just did on a chapter 6 review. On the bottom, it looks like we have to use the swing method to find the simplest form of 2x squared minus x minus 1. Although it's pretty simple, so I think we can work with these 2x and x here. And I think we can pretty much go down to 1 and 1 because we know 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, and the middle term is negative 1, so we've got 2x times that 1 equals negative 2x and positive 1, we're going to have our answer. So 2x plus 1 onto x minus 1 is our factored form of 2x squared minus x minus 1. And now we cancel the x minus 1s, and we write it in the simplest form, x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Some people might be tempted at this stage to cancel the x plus 1s, but you can't do that. Why not? Because this, if this were 2 times x plus 1, you could, but this is 2x plus 1. That's different. So you can't go canceling anything here. For you to be able to cancel, it has to be in brackets as a full a term. All right. So that's number one. We're going to move over and do number six from your skills practice package, skills practice 27. Number six is x squared minus 10x plus 25 over x minus 5. And if you've been doing your factoring worksheet in chapter 6, your skills practice, I think it was 16 or 17, um, or if you've been watching your YouTube videos on chapter 6 factoring, you'd recognize this as a trinomial square because it has a perfect square here, perfect square there, and therefore we know the pattern x minus 5 times x minus 5 is going to do it, right? Because the middle term, when you divide the middle term, negative 10, you get negative 5, Take it in half is negative 5, and negative 5 squared is equal to 25. That's, a, that's the pattern of trinomial squares. On the bottom, look at that, it's x minus 5, we can cancel. Our final answer here is just x minus 5, and that's it, x minus 5 over 1. So really, uh, simplifying 10-1 uh, is really about simplifying fractions. So we're going to move now to 10-2. All right, now we're on 10-2. In this section, we're multiplying fractions. Again, I'll do an easy version of this. Um, let's take, you know, let's take 3 sevenths times, uh, let's say, uh, let's do 3 sevenths times, uh, just to make it 14 over 24, for instance. So 3 sevenths times 14 over 24. If we're going to multiply it straight out without simplifying it first, eh, it's okay, it's not that hard, but it's a bit messy. You're not going to find the simplest form very easily. So what we do first is, that, as you will probably recall, you find the in common factors so that you can divide them out first and then cancel things so that it's simple from the beginning before you multiply it. So 3 goes into 24 8 times, so 24 divided by... Uh, 24 divided by 3 is 8, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. And we get 2 over 8. Oh, looks like we could have even simplified it more. That's equal to 1 quarter. Sometimes we don't always get it right away. So there's a, but we certainly, by simplifying this right here, we were able to get it down to a real simple form, first of all. Um, 2 eighths, which is equal to 1 quarter. 
We do the same thing with fractions, uh, polynomial fractions. The only difference is our simplification process is more complicated because we have to factor these polynomials. So t squared minus 16, difference of squares. Everybody should recognize the minus sign. The 16 is a perfect square. Unfortunately, nothing else there is difference of squares. It doesn't come so easily. Although, right here, you can see the common factor of t. That factors out. You really have to factor first and then cancel. If you factor, 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 get things down to the lowest terms, I guarantee there's going to be something that's going to simplify. That's the way these questions are actually designed. So it's almost always the case is if you get the factoring part right, everything else falls into place. But if you don't get the factoring right, it doesn't quite work. So if you're having trouble with these, go back to chapter six, learn factoring. Look at the YouTube videos in chapter six. Whatever it takes, get factoring down because then this chapter rolls really easily. But here we go. This is t minus four, okay, and t plus four. And then down below, as I said, there's a common factor and it's t. If you divide by t on both sides, you get t onto t minus 2. Again, if you're having trouble with that, you really got to look at chapter 6 again. Then we have t minus 2. This is, we're just rewriting this here, t minus 4. And as I said, as I predicted, because we factored these properly, we're going to have things that are now going to cancel. You can notice the t minus 4 cancels with the t minus 4. Because this is multiplication, we can do that. If this was a plus sign, no way. But only because it's multiplication. Now the t minus 2 cancels with t minus 2, and we're left with t plus 4 over t. And that's our final answer. There's nothing we can cancel there. Again, don't get tempted. People get tempted. They think they can cancel the t into the t. Not possible. Because t plus 4 is its own entity and that you can't separate it. So that's your final answer. Let's look at now number 18. This is all from Skills Practice 27. And this is number 18. It looks nasty. It looks horrible. It looks like this big giant problem. But really, it's not that hard. This, again, if you know you're factoring, these problems will all fall into place. So a squared minus a minus 12, well, you got to look for the factors of 12 that subtract to be 1. I can tell you right now they're pretty easy. It's going to be 4 and 3. 12 and 1, 6 and 2, and 4 and 3 are your only factors. The only ones that are going to uh, work out to be a negative 1 in the middle are 4 and 3. And what we really need is negative 4 and plus 3, right? Because negative 4 plus 3 is going to give us our minus 1. So I'll factor that. We get a minus 4 and a plus 3 on the top there. Then over a squared minus 5, a plus 4, very similar, but now it's factors of 4 that add to be 5, Well, and it's got to be negative 5, so it's going to be a minus 4 and a minus 1. Why? Because 1 plus 4 equals 5, and negative 4, negative 1, when you add them equals negative 5. Negative 4 times negative 1 equals positive 4 when you multiply them. Over here, we've got the factors of 3 have to subtract to be 2. A, now we want positive 2, so we're going to want to put A plus 3 and A minus 1 because 3, in fact, 3 minus 1 is 2 and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Over here, the factors of 6 have to subtract to be 1, so we want a positive 1, so we're going to do A plus 3 and A minus 2. And now, once we factor things out, everything's going to start to roll because there's all these things that are obvious, you know, obvious things that you can cancel. So we've got a minus 4 cancel with a minus 4, a plus 3 cancel with a plus 3, a minus 1 cancel with a minus 1, and we're left with a plus 3 over a minus 2. Again, if you're having trouble with these, you really got to go back to chapter 6 and practice factoring because most of this problem was just factoring all these things. And by now, you should be good at factoring, good enough so that you can recognize these patterns. If you need to write out your factors, that's fine. In these cases, I did them in my head, but you can do them by writing out the factors. The factors of 3, for instance, are just 3 and 1. 3 and 1, how do they combine to be positive 2? It's got to be plus 3 and minus 1. That equals positive 2. Factors of 6 are 6 and 1. 3 and 2, how does that work out to be positive 1? 3 and 2 subtracts to be 1 if this is plus and that's minus. So that's how I got my factors. You get good at these the more you practice them. So keep practicing, all right?